Welcome back to KSG. Welcome if it's your first time here. This is Knowledge, Skills, and Gear, and today's video is going to be yet another in the line of GMRS two-way radio videos. And today we are going to be discussing the GMRS magic known as the repeater. So GMRS radios are, just to review, are two-way radios that are capable of talking to one another over a greater distance than the regular walkie-talkie blister packs that you'd buy in your big box store. Those are typically going to be a family radio service or FRS radio. Uh, also to recap, GMRS does share a lot of channels with FRS and they can, with a few caveats, be utilized together. And you can see that in our other GMRS video um, in this series, the one that kind of kicked it off. Um, when we talk about repeaters, um, a lot of people may not be familiar with the concept at all, but as a quick little review, these are line of sight radios, meaning that you have to have a relatively flat and unobstructed area so you can transmit from your radio to the next one up. And there's a lot of factors that can impact how far you can go but probably the most significant one is going to be antenna height and what's in between. So if you're up high on a hill, and I want you to think about what you can see, you can probably stand up on that hill and see all the way to the horizon, which is about 13 miles. But if you're at the base of that hill and you're looking out, your field of vision is going to be somewhat limited because you're not going to be able to see straight through to everything. Things like trees and buildings and hills and stuff are going to get in your way. So if you're up higher, you can go farther. Now keep that in your back pocket and let's talk about a repeater. A repeater can be thought of as a type of relay. What I want you to imagine is that you're shouting to the next person over who can hear you then that person shouts out again so that your message can go further. And essentially, that's what a repeater does. Um, through GMRS magic, um, there's something called an offset baked into repeater channels where they're sort of splitting the channel or making two channels that you can access with one specialized repeater channel. We're not going to get very far into the science because you don't really need to. This is baked into GMRS. Um, repeater channels, there are typically eight of them. They will be channels 15 through 22. And yes, those are exactly the same channels 15 through 22 that you will broadcast on in Simplex as well, and even in FRS. This brings us to another concept called tones that are used to activate the repeater, to simplify that down and put it, you know, translate geek to human here. It tells the repeater that you're talking to it and not another radio directly, so the repeater knows to pick up your transmission and extend it out further. Now, those repeaters, as you can probably guess, are basically like having two radios that can listen and transmit simultaneously, hence that offset and the two channels combined into one. The first question that you probably have rolling around if you haven't done this before is, well, wait, if I'm sharing channels 15 through 22 with my simplex or my radio to radio and FRS, doesn't that mean that when that repeater repeats my message out, other people that aren't on the repeater can hear it? And the answer is yes, they can. Everybody can because you're broadcasting this out. And there's no difference in that broadcast channel than there is in any other channel. The difference comes in in those tones that I talked about, because the tone is what activates it. So when, when you hear somebody else on the repeater and you try to answer without being on the repeater channel, there's no tone, so the repeater doesn't know you're talking to it. So there, without getting too sciencey, you have to have that tone so the repeater knows you're talking to it, but you can hear everything the repeater puts out because it's coming out on your standard channel. So. Yes, you can hear repeaters even in simplex, and you can hear GMS, GMRS repeater in FRS, but you cannot transmit to it because of those tones. Now, I've said that these channels are baked in with their offsets, and they are. The part that you have to input is the tones, and that's where you're going to go in and program your GMRS radio uh, with like repeater 18, and you're gonna say, hey, this repeater is local five, or you know, my town five, whatever it is. 
and you're going to have to input what kind of tone and what that is in there. And where do we get that information? How does this work? Well, first you have to be licensed to use GMRS. When you get your call sign, your call sign will get you the ability to create a free account on places like mygmrs.com, among many others. And many, if not most, repeaters will be listed in that area if people want them to be used. Not every repeater out there is going to be listed on any one site, so the more people you know in the hobby, the more likely you are to find some extra repeaters. Some areas have more than others. Your mileage may vary. Now, how does a repeater actually help this out? Well, typically a repeater is going to be located in a clear area, fairly high up in relation to everything that's around it. If you're on a smooth, flat area, your, your view to the horizon is 12 to 13 miles, assuming clarity and that there's no fog or anything else. In real practice, there's things, there's buildings or cars or hills and trees and all sorts of stuff that gets in the way, so you're not getting that. A lot of the blister pack radios advertise 10 miles. In reality, FRS radios, I rarely get out to a mile, maybe two on a real good day if I have elevation. GMRS radios in simplex without being in heavy traffic or really hilly terrain, I get an average of about two miles and that increases significantly if I can get myself up higher than everything around me. Height makes might in two-way radios and there's no way around that. So repeater antennas are typically going to be quite high up. The other thing is they will typically be more powerful than most radios and certainly more powerful than most hand talker radios. GMRS hand talkers top out right around 5 watts. Repeaters go significantly higher than that. Now, mobile and GMRS go up to 50 watts, but remember there's only a certain amount of broadcasting that you can do on the channels. So what is the maximum wattage that you can put out with GMRS? It is 50 watts. What's the maximum power you're allowed on a repeater? 50 watts. So a 50 watt repeater with a high elevation can have a significant area of coverage. And it might be fairly easy for you to hit that even if you're outside of the area of coverage and you have a higher quality hand unit with a good antenna and a good line of sight to it. So there we go. What do we know about our repeater channels now? Well, our repeater channels are basically eight channels reserved that have an offset baked in the GMRS programming. That offset is transmitting to the GMRS or antenna five megahertz separated from what it's listen, what it's going to transmit on what you're listening on. So in essence, it's using two bonded channels or a separated channel, however you want to put that. The good news is you don't have to worry about it. That part is baked in. How do we go, hey, Mr. Repeater, knock, knock. I want to use your services. Um, I am allowed. So what we do with that is we input a tone. And that tone wakes up the repeater and causes it to go. Hence, you can hear the broadcast of a repeater on channels 15 through 22 in both GMRS and FRS simplex. And remember, simplex just means radio to radio, not deliberately using a repeater. So how do I, the user, know that that person I just heard is on the repeater and I can't talk to them if I'm on channels 15 through 22? Well, there's something called a squelch tail that you'll hear at the end of a repeater. But you're just gonna hear a brief half, half a second to a second of static at the end of the transmission. And that will usually clue you in that you're hearing traffic from a repeater. And you may not always get that, so that's sort of a hit and miss. And it's part of the fun of GMRS because you never know quite what you're getting into when you start. But in general, you will hear that and you'll know. Uh, in simplex mode, that squelch isn't there. You just talk right to the radio. Now, when a lot of people are first setting up their repeater, they're not certain that they're hitting that repeater or getting on. So one of the more common things I've seen people do is they'll take two of their radios and tune them to that repeater, and they'll set them up right on their desk next to each other. They'll grab one and transmit, and then nothing comes back on the other, and they're like, ah, oh, I must have done something wrong. I don't have the right input tone, or my offset's wrong, or something. It's generally none of that. What we're, what we're usually experiencing is that, remember, 
these radios are using channels 15 through 22 in both simplex and repeater mode simultaneously. So your radio is putting out power and kind of blocking out the ability of the repeater to get in on the other radio. What you can do is you can turn up the volume and separate them, you know, 20, 30 feet and just listen for it and hear it, you know, if you want to talk to yourself. But the best way is to go out there and get a radio check in. And if at first you don't succeed, try again. You know, go out there on like a Saturday and try it a couple different times. Because really, until you break in and start talking to some other people in the area, if you're looking at this as a, from a hobbyist standpoint, you're not going to really start enjoying yourself and having fun. Now, if you're only doing this for your family, then give, or your group or whatever, give another person that radio tune and um, go do your radio checks. Hopefully this video has been entertaining, hopefully kind of informative. GMRS repeaters. It's the man standing high on the hill that's listening to what you say and then sending it back out to everybody where you want it. There is no programming necessary for your offsets because we're going to use pre-programmed channels that share GMRS and FRS channels 15 through 22. And the only part you're going to have to input is going to be an input tone for that repeater. And what is an input tone? An input tone is the magic password to get the repeater to listen to you and send what you have to say out to the world. And with that being said, you can hear what's coming out of that repeater because it comes out on standard GMRS and FRS channels 15 through 22 and everybody can pick that up. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I know this is a big topic. We've covered the basics of YGMRS over FRS in an earlier video that I will link to in here. Um, should be in one of these corners somewhere. Um, we've covered a little bit about what a repeater is today. The last thing that I would like to leave you with is the idea of standardization with radios. Um, it's a good idea to standardize at least part of what you're doing. The biggest standardization I can say for radios, I make sure all of mine are compatible with a program called Chirp. Chirp is basically a way of using your computer to program your radio. Now, you can use manufacturer's programming for pretty much every radio out there. But a lot of the manufacturers on these radios, particularly the less expensive ones, only work with Windows with that manufacturer software. Chirp works with Windows, Linux, and Mac. So it gives you more options. And um, more standardization can include batteries and accessories. And if you'd like to talk more about that, let me know down in the comments below. Until then, go ahead and um, make sure you got your FCC license. That link is below also. This is Joe with KSG. Stay safe.